There was a time when all PC gamers had was just Steam. However, since then, PC gaming has changed, with more and more publishers making their own launches. It's become a space with an increasing number of places to grab titles, and it can have its upsides, but it can also have its downsides, such as missing features, bad interfaces, bad download speeds, and having your friends mixed up is annoying, and there are also some concerns for security. In this video, I'm going to go through a few of the major storefronts and launches on PC to see how they compare with each other. Some of them were bad at launch, but have gotten pretty good, and some of them were good at launch and have gotten worse. But it's 2020 and let's see where the state of things are, and at the end of the day, if this is actually a good thing or not for gamers. This is why, last month, we announced Xbox Game Pass for PC. Xbox Game Pass for PC came out on June 9th, 2019, and it's been almost a year and wow. If you haven't checked out Xbox Game Pass, you really should. The great thing about the PC version of Xbox Game Pass is that it's the cheapest option, and the app is great for connecting with your Xbox account, so you can easily connect with friends or continue with your achievements. The best part also is you get the Xbox version along with each PC version. So games such as Gears of War, you can get the PC version, and for whatever reason if your PC is taken up, you can just go ahead onto the Xbox if you have one and resume right from there. There are some amazing titles on Xbox Game Pass, such as Gears of War 5, A Plague Tale Innocence, Forza Horizon 4, Final Fantasy 15, Two Point Hospital, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Frostpunk, Yakuza 0, Halo The Master Chief Collection, and The Outer Worlds. The Xbox app on PC is simplistic in its design. It highlights the installed games in the left side of the bar as well as the most recently added games that have been added to Xbox Game Pass. It also has a range of filtering options from shooters, indies, and puzzle games. There are a whole bunch of other genres anywhere in between those if you're looking for them. Its information is conveyed easily and it's helpful to see how big the game file is. It also shows the achievements and a trailer with a description of the game. This is Microsoft we're talking about, so you'll have access to the best servers in your area, and I was consistently getting maxed out speeds from my internet when downloading or updating my games. I've never experienced any dropouts or any glitches or bugs across its servers, and it's been a consistent experience all around. Because this is the Xbox app, you'll have access to all the same social events that Xbox has, such as achievements, friends list, viewing players profiles, favoriting them, sending voice chats, messaging and game invites. Security is also a great thing from Microsoft. I have a two-step authenticator on my Xbox account, I don't get random logins, I don't get multiple security hacks or breaches or anything like that. There are a ton more games to check out, and it'll be interesting to see what Xbox Game Pass evolves into with the Xbox Series X. The fact that you can get Microsoft exclusives for such a cheap price makes it one of the best launches out there, but when you throw in the rest of the other games that you get, Xbox Game Pass is essential to any gamer, thanks to its diverse lineup of games and outstanding value. Epic Game Store hasn't received the most positive reception thanks to its aggressive approach to exclusives, but it has a lot of developer support thanks to its 88% for developers and 12% for Epic for each game sold. While Epic has a ways to go in trying to prove to be the good guy, the store has a lot of value thanks to its weekly and sometimes fortnightly free games, and these free games have been nothing short of incredible. There's no memberships, no subscriptions of any sort. These are all games you get for free, just for having the Epic Game Store launcher. Some of the free games are Into the Breach, Celeste, FTL or Faster Than Light, Hyperlight Drifter, Darksiders 1 and 2, Kingdom Come Deliverance, a whole bunch of Batman games, The Witness, Rhyme and What Remains of Edith Finch. The UI of the Epic Game Store is pretty simplistic. You'll be greeted with the news that's most recent, so you'll know the latest games that are hitting the store. You'll have access to all the apps functions on the left side and these will show you any deals that are currently on as well as free games for the week. There are some complaints I have like how do I know how big the game file is and there are no user reviews of games. However, there are at least some reviews from major publications such as IGN, PC Gamer and Game Informer. The library of your games is easy to identify which games are installed but for some reason you can't hide the games you don't want to see at all. There is at least cloud storage option for games. Much like a lot of the launches you're going to see on this list, the Epic Game Store has fantastic servers and I haven't had any problem maxing out my internet speeds. Game updates have always been fast. Unfortunately, the worst aspect of the Epic Game Launcher is the social aspect. There's no in-game overlay, you can't message your friends when they're offline, there's no community forms or ways to easily connect with players you just met. 
and there is no community marketplace. Finishing off strongly though, the Epic Game Store does have really good security. I don't have a two-step authenticator on my profile and I haven't had any malicious activity, anyone's tried to steal my account, or any sort of nasty emails or suspicious emails. The storefront is rarely in the news about any sort of breaches or hacks. And there aren't many games on sale like there is on Steam. But even if you just download the Epic Game Store just for the free games, you'll have over 30 games in your library. It's hard to argue with the value of that. Uplay is another launcher that didn't have the greatest reception when it first came out. However, Ubisoft since then has dropped the DRM policies and made its games available on other storefronts other than their own. Unfortunately, you still need Uplay to run the official Ubisoft games, but the launcher has still come a long way from when it originally launched. When you first open up Uplay, you'll see the news, like the Epic Game Store. However, there are a lot more Ubisoft games in the news. The UI is surprisingly good. Everything is accessible right away. Seeing your game library and what you have installed is quick. You can also hide games you don't want to see if you want to keep your library clean. I still, till this day, don't know how big the file size of games are through the app, but at least it does have an in-game overlay. There is a subscription fee on the Uplay store. For $20 a month, you get access to all the Ubisoft games. That includes Anno 1800, the Splinter Cell series, the Watch Dogs series, pretty much any Ubisoft game you can think of, you'll get with the subscription. Unfortunately, Ubisoft games just aren't that good, so it really isn't a value proposition. And there's barely no free games to speak of unless you're into something like Trackmania and a few other demos. I haven't had any issues when it comes to Uplay's servers, surprisingly. I've never seen it down and I've never had trouble logging to my account. Uplay does have its own community forms, but unfortunately, there's just not much in terms of reviews. There's no community reviews and there's no reputable major publication reviews of games. But there are some really good live service games on it like Rainbow Six. Unfortunately, security has to be the biggest issue with Uplay right now. I've never had as many emails saying that I've been logged into Turkey from Uplay as I have with almost anything else in my life. So I don't know if my account's actually getting hacked. I don't know if this is just some malicious email, but Uplay needs to fix this stuff. And I do have a two-step authenticator on my profile. Overall, in terms of its functionality, the Uplay store isn't too bad, but its value and its security are big problems that Ubisoft must focus on. Origin is another service that's come a long way since it originally launched. When Origin first launched, it was known to be the biggest spyware you could give your computer at the time. However, since then, Origin has relaxed its spyware and it's become less bloated overall. And surprisingly, there's a lot of good value to be had here. The UI of Origins is pretty clean. You'll have your main tabs on the left for browsing and looking at your own game library as well as the news and any deals that are currently on. You'll have access to your friends list on the right side and knowing which games are installed are as easy as looking at the bottom left corner and seeing if you have a download option. You'll also have the option to hide your games, which is nice and the ability to see what specials are on at the moment, just by clicking the deals button. Surprisingly, the value is when Origin gets really good. For just $20 a month, you get access to all the EA games, and I mean all of them. So this is great for myself, for example, when the new Star Wars game came out, I didn't have to pay full price. I paid $20 for the month of Origin Premiere and played Star Wars for a month, which was more than enough for me to actually beat the game in that timeline. When Anthem first came out and was full price, I just pay $20 and I got the game for a month. So it's a really good way to get those deals, assuming you can actually beat the game for a month. But even if you took an extra month to beat the game, you're still well under the full price version of a game. So there's a lot of value to be had here. And since EA makes a lot of games, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are interested in this deal. When it comes to the social aspect of Origin, this is where things get a little bit bad. There are no publications at all for reviews. There's no IGN, there's no GameSpot reviews, and there's obviously no community reviews to go along with that. So judging a game's quality inside Origin is a problem. There have been no security issues with Origin, and I do not have a two-step authenticator attached to my account, and I've never had any malicious emails sent to me or any compromises to my account. Overall, EA's Origin has come a long way. It's a very fast and fluid app with all the EA games that you could imagine. The servers are strong and it always maxes out my download speed and the security despite not having a two-step authenticator on my account has been smooth. And surprisingly, there's a lot of value to be had here. For just $20 a month guys, you get access to all the Star Wars games, all those Bioware games, and granted, they're nothing special, 
But if you're interested in these games, it's a really good value proposition to be had. Why pay full price for the game when you can just go on the subscription and play them anyway? Going into this list, Steam has the most to offer with a lot of goodwill thanks to its pro-consumer approaches and the most features out of any other storefront out there. It has its early movers advantage since it's been out the longest. It's also had the most time to adjust feedback and improve its services and people have built a large game library on Steam and it has a large good community following. Steam doesn't update their storefront often and when it does it's very subtle and just does minor improvements. It's no surprise that Steam's interface is the gold standard when it comes to storefronts. Immediately when you log in you'll be greeted with the best deals and recommendations which are personalized based on your game library. There are numerous tabs so you can easily find what you're looking for. If you want to browse games through genre or recommendations or new releases, you can easily find what you're looking for. Your friends list is quick and easy to access just hitting the bottom right corner saying friends and adding games to your Steam library is as easy as the bottom left corner saying add game. Steam servers are once again the gold standard. I've never had any issues downloading my games at max speed, everything my internet can handle. And updating games has always been quick and easy thanks to its auto update feature which automatically tracks if you've played the game enough to be recommended as auto update. Sometimes the Dota 2 client has been down but I'm not sure if this is a Dota thing or a Steam thing but it's worth pointing out there. Steam has the most functions when it comes to its social aspect. It's the gold standard once again. There are so much things dedicated to the community from community reviews to community marketplaces, community videos, adding friends, seeing their profiles, tracking their friends, tracking their games and the hours they've played and achievements. This has the whole suite. You can also sell your items, you can also trade your item with other friends. So if you move in between accounts and you want to move everything from one account to another, you can easily do that. If you want to sell your items and buy Steam games with them, you can do that too. Security is probably the most difficult thing to analyze with Steam. It has great security considering it has over 100 million active users on its servers. But there's still a problem. If I don't have a two-step authenticator, I lose a lot of privileges to my account, such as having to wait numerous days, sometimes even weeks, just to sell an item on the marketplace. If I don't have a two-step authenticator, my account has actually been hacked once. Not only that though, but for some weird reason, if you put your profile on exposed on Dota 2, you'll actually start getting some weird friend requests from random people who you don't know. There are still a little bit of security concerns when it comes to third-party external apps trying to get a hold of your account, so be careful out there. But in terms of random emails or things like that, I don't really get them. So I understand that Steam has a difficult job when it comes to security and have done a good job trying to make as much security as possible, but there still needs to be a little bit more control in terms of who is this person adding me? Do I have any mutual friends? Okay, can I see more about them? Because it's as simple as putting your profile on private and you don't know who's adding you. Steam is the godfather of storefronts on the PC space. It has every feature you can imagine. The social aspect from player profiles, achievements, user reviews, community forms, community marketplace, and of course what Steam is known for, the summer and winter sales. There's just so much titles for great prices. Its servers are incredibly reliable and fast when it comes to downloading and updating large files. Unfortunately though, the security is a bit of an issue and a bit of a concern when it comes to Steam, but this is probably the only storefront that I insist that you get a two-step authenticator on. In terms of developer support, Steam could do a better job offering developers a bigger cut than the 70-30 split they currently have, and this would entice developers to actually start making games with Steam rather than the one-year exclusivity we've been seeing with Epic Games. But this is still the gold standard when it comes to storefronts and essential to any PC gamer out there. The Rockstar Game Launcher is one of the most basic launchers out there. With only 8 titles on its platform, it's a meaningless launcher with the most bare bones of functions. Its games are expensive, I can't find my friends. It's not all bad though, there's cloud saves and automatic updates, but like I said, this is the most basic of launches and there's not much to be said here. Like the Rockstar Games launcher, the Bethesda launcher has only Bethesda titles, such as Wolfenstein, Fallout 76, and The Evil Within. The upcoming Doom game will also be exclusive on the launcher. And much like the Rockstar Game launcher, the Bethesda launcher is pretty bare bones. It has its own games for sale only, and for some weird reason, every tab takes you to an actual web extension. So if you want to buy a game, it will take you to a web page. So you have to actually buy it from a Bethesda website. Its games are overpriced, its servers are slow, and there's not much to be said here. This is a very bad launcher from top to bottom. Bethesda has a long ways to go before they fix this launcher, and with the upcoming Elder Scrolls game coming out, it will most likely be exclusive to this storefront, and I'm curious on how the mod community will react to that. The 
Blizzard launcher, also known as Battle.net, is one of the more older launchers on this list, and it acts pretty much the way you'd expect an Activision slash Blizzard app to run. It has their own games only, like World of Warcraft, Diablo, and the Call of Duty games. It rarely has any sort of deals on any of their titles. It doesn't have any sort of subscription like a Battle.net Pass that just gets you all of their games. Unfortunately, you'll have to make do with their free games, such as StarCraft, World of Warcraft to some extent, and the new Call of Duty Battle Royale mode. Its servers are unfortunately very inconsistent in my experience. I've had speeds ranging from 500 kilobytes a second all the way up to 12 megabytes a second and everything in between. Security is to be a big problem. My World of Warcraft account got hacked once. However, Blizzard highly recommends every user to get a two-step authenticator on their account. And I have one on my own account now and I've never had any issues. If Blizzard could just fix their download speed and make them more consistent, it wouldn't be such a bad launcher, but I can't give them a high recommendation just due to their inconsistent download speeds, and with games being the size they are nowadays, I really need those speeds to be consistent and really taking everything my internet can handle. In the end, there are some good launchers out there. Steam continues to be the gold standard, Epic Store and surprisingly Origin can offer some really good value. Then you have launchers such as the Bethesda and Rockstar Games launcher, which serves no value to the consumer at all, instead forcing them to download a useless launcher that's lacking in features and security. It's a little bit disheartening to see some publishers put little to no effort in their storefront, but one thing is for sure, this tactic is working. They're making more money than ever before thanks to their own launches and not having to split the revenue with any of the other storefronts. There are loads more launches I could have included in this video, like God Galaxies 1, Nvidia's GeForce Experience, and I'm sure more publishers on a small smaller scale will try make their own launcher. All we can hope for as gamers is that they actually put the time and invest what's necessary to make them great.